Today I embark on the most epic yet relaxing yet intense journey adrift on the endless sea. If you haven't seen the first 100 days of Raft, check that out first, link below. But otherwise, whack on your floaties as I fight my way through frost, fire and radioactive sludge to chase down crazy Olaf and save this post-apocalyptic water world from tyranny. And I of course build a glorious floating resort. I played 200 days of Raft. It's day 101 and the endless drift continues. I whacked some beets on to cook into veggie soup and continued fishing up them fancy sea creatures. And suddenly I stumbled upon a strange sight. What is this in the sky? Have I just stumbled into the story island accidentally? I wasn't planning on continuing the story just yet, but who am I to argue with the power of drift? I did not aim my ru- it's just literally downwind. So just like that, Varuna point, here we go. I made ready my inventory, grabbing tools and supplies and whatnot. And before long, it was obvious I'd arrived at a half submerged, fully abandoned construction site. I fluffed around doing some chores and then made the questionable decision to disembark just as night fell. There's some serious underwater business going on here. Very interesting. Guess better deal with you, my friend. My friend here was Shamuzel, Shamozel the shark's pet cow. And he gave me some trouble because I hadn't played Raft for over a month at this point. So I was a bit rusty when it came to stabbing sharks in the eyeball. I even had to use some health salves, but I got there eventually. I've got these bubble spots here that give me breath. So that's positive. These jellyfish look zappy zappy. Are these ones zappy zappy? No, these ones are friendly. How far down can I go? This was indeed a huge underwater area and quite pretty with all the colors. I began poking around, collecting what I could and sussing out areas of interest. I found a G. What does G mean? Keep getting those tremors. Goodness me. Those tremors were a constant as I explored and I had a feeling they foreshadowed something monstrous. I can go so far down. There's another G. What do the Gs mean? Oh, mother load key. I eventually headed back to the first crack in this building where I spotted yet another strange G and found myself a construction helmet. And as day 102 dawned, I finally noticed the gap directly above, blocked by some oscillating zappy zap jellyfish. I timed my entry and in I went. The Laguna Point has all too many holes in it. It makes it easy to move unnoticed. Today, I nicked a hammer. Yesterday, I took some dried meat from the foreman's stash. Ah, I want to grab something even better tonight. So this construction site is haunted by the aptly named grabber who likes to grab. Maybe that's what the G stands for. And back in this room, I saw something really scary. What are you? The anglerfish was indeed nightmare fuel, but it was pretty easy to defeat. <laughs> Yeah, boy. I continued exploring, and in this room with anglerfish number two, I found my first story item for Varuna Point, a spotlight part. I found a bunch of goodies lying around too, and then my second spotlight part. I then spotted this elevator shaft, through which I swam to the floor above. I found spotlight part number three, and a second note. This one was the grabber boasting about how good he is at grabbing. What a legend. I scoured the level, and once satisfied I'd picked it clean, I headed back to the raft where I emptied my bags, put some seaweed onto Guify, and trash onto Compact. I waited around for several batches of vine goo to be ready. And with these, I crafted flippers and oxygen bottles. Since this area was entirely underwater, at least so far, I was gonna need plenty of these and what I'd been wearing had already broken. Once I had two of each on me, I headed back out. Straight into the jaws of Surfshark VPN, the sponsor for this video. That is right, people, my first ever sponsor, huzzah. Does that make me a real YouTuber now? Not to make you poop your pants, but every second you're online, companies are keeping track of who you are and what you are doing. And even if they're keeping track of you with the best of intentions, there's still the chance that they suffer a data breach, which could result in your info falling into malicious hands. And so the anonymity that Surfshark provides is a godsend. Also, I'm an Aussie, so I see this screen on YouTube quite a lot. And there's often stuff the wife and I want to stream that's not available in Australia. Thankfully with Surfshark, we can set our virtual location to anywhere in the world and pretend we're not stinky Aussies and we can watch whatever we want. And this is crazy to me. You can use one Surfshark subscription on as many devices as you want. So for example, if all the chickens in this coop shared the already low cost of $2.49 a month, they could split the cost 12 ways. Bargain. Use the code Floydson to get 83% off and three months totally free. And there is a 30 day money back guarantee. So give it a crack and change your mind if you want. Check out the link below. All right, friends, back to Raft. I broke Surfshark VPN's jaws and got back to my quest. This. 
four spotlight parts. I've only got three. Okay, I need to find two more spotlight parts. Like the video if you agree that I am a mathematical genius. And here began my long suffering search for the remaining spotlight part. I tried deeper with no luck, although I did see some pretty blue jellies. I retraced my steps, or should I say I retraced my swim strokes, hoping to find something I'd missed and no luck. Could it be in here? What the heck is that? Oh, there's spikes. That room was indeed very spiky, but it lacked spotlight parts, which was rude. I managed to find some goodies I'd missed, so that was something, but by the time day 104 dawned, I was going slightly insane. <laughs> Get out of the way, jellyfish. And then, back in the first building, I discovered an entire above water area that I'd completely missed. Oh, hello. Hello. I think I figured it out. Alright, alright, alright. So now I can turn this on and I think it'll make the jellyfish move. Yeah. Get out of my way, zappy zappy idiots. Alright, can I go this way? Doors locked from the other side. Making progress, baby. Let's go. This area felt like it was well and truly the grabber's domain. Assuming he's the bloke that put up all the spikes. What's with the spiky spikies, man? Ow. Another note from the grabber told of the workers abandoning the construction site as the water rose, heading out in search of the fabled utopia. As long as I live, no one will claim my treasure. No one will reach my nest. No one will reach your nest. I'm gonna reach your nest. Your spiky spiky traps can't stop me, mate. Also, you left a bunch of G's that I can follow. The grabber's booby traps became more elaborate. This first tripwire got me. Ah! You cheeky bugger. But I navigated my way past the next few with some choice jumping. I parkoured through this nonsense, climbed these ramps, parkoured through some more nonsense. That is a big old... That's terrifying. Except it's only in the middle, so I'm good. And finally, progress. I grabbed this advanced headlight blueprint and the motherload key. I would be bored these days if the motherload wasn't on the forefront of my mind. The water stole it from me. Now there's trouble in the way. It's risky to deal with, but it might be worth it. Ah, but it's just one shark. How hard could it be? I don't know why I was having so much trouble climbing those crates, but either way, the grabber's warning is ominous. A shark of some kind is protecting the mother load. I exited via that spiky spiky room I found earlier and headed straight down to the mother load door. I killed a couple of anglerfish on my way down before finding myself at another crosswalk. Crossing back over to the other building. This looks like the mother load. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my, what the hell? <laughs> uh, I'm running back here. <laughs> you see how big that thing was? I need to breathe. Yeah, so that's a big shark. Now I know what was causing all those tremors. It was Fathead McGee donking his noggin on the walls. I tried to get into a fight with the big fella and I think it went pretty well. Ow! That didn't do much damage to me somehow. He just broke open that wall, I think. Oh, he's back. I discovered these areas with air pockets around the edge of the room, so I noodled around trying to figure out how I was supposed to fight the demon shark. <laughs> Playing cat and mouse with the biggest shark I've ever seen in my life. Alright, run. Run, 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 run. I eventually noticed a pile of barrels in the middle of the room, and when I headed to investigate, I ended up in a game of run around the pole with the shark. Eventually, he charged straight into the pole, shattering the concrete. Keep in mind, this is of course all happening underwater, so my breath was constantly running out. I grabbed one of the barrels. What, do I, what am I doing? Okay, I think I've sort of figured out what I'm trying to do. Alright, let's just get him to break the poles. Come on, big boy. Break the pole. He missed! What are you doing, mate? As he broke each pole, I chucked these explosive barrels in the wreckages. Ah, I'm so slow. The problem was, all my flippers and oxygen bottles were now broken, so I was rather slow and low on breath. If I get him to run into this... Okay. Does that mean I'm free? Oh my gosh, there's more explosive stuff. So I had placed barrels into all four pillars, but I only needed to do one. It's fine, we made it one level up either way. I wish my flippers didn't break. This is so hard without flippers. This next level was the same deal, except it took two headbutts to make the pole vulnerable. Here he is, here he is. Ah! Here we go. All right, looks like there's one more pole. 
the, the pole to end all poles. And this level was hard. My relatively short breath timer and my extremely slow swimming were deadly. This is so stressful. What are, what are they doing to me? Oh gosh. I just got yeeted. I managed to get the big buffer to charge the pole once, and then I swam all the way over here to get my breath back. Come on. Yes. All right, we did some more damage. Maybe one more hit. And a third time. All right, good. Just need the barrel. Just need the barrel. I got whacked across the room a few times attempting to get a barrel up there, but I eventually did. But the shark was just not cooperating. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Oh, he missed me. And he missed the pole. Try again. Come on. Come on, I'm running out of breath. I'm running out of breath, dude. Please. Hello? Please. This guy. I'm literally gonna die. Oh my gosh. No! <sighs> Lose two thirds of inventory. Are you serious? World saved. Waiting for rescue. Uh, okay. So yeah, I died. My first death in this world. I lost a bunch of goodies, as well as durability to all my tools, which is a bummer, but I can always replace them, so no big deal. The problem was I had an extreme lack of seaweed. I didn't have enough to craft replacement flippers and oxygen bottles, and there was no way I was heading back to that boss fight without them. And so I had to leave on a quest for seaweed. I patched up the perimeter of my raft and did some chores as I drifted, and before long I arrived at a green dot island. This island had a very crappy underwater area though, devoid of delicious seaweed, so I was disappointed. I did at least get to murder Shamalama Ding Dong the shark, Surfshark VPN's pet budgie, so that was some consolation. And I collected everything underwater regardless, because it is still useful even if it isn't seaweed. I also dug dirt, found treasure, poked the bear, found trash treasure, and sold a bunch of fancy fish to the trading post. I bought a bunch more bait, titanium ore and scrap, an air horn, some chili, a fishing hat, and some sunnies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Air horn can go here. I don't know why. <laughs> that's a... Uh that's a good find. I approve. What a most excellent air horn. I put a spicy pineberry beverage in the juicer to mix, as this gives a swim speed buff that I reckon would be handy fighting the big boy shark. I then acted on some advice from a commenter who told me that wool fills up recycling machines very quickly. Two wool equals one trash cube. This was wonderful news. Before long, I pulled up at a small island, and this one had an okay underwater area, but it only netted me nine seaweed. I needed like 40, so that was a slow start. I forged onward to yet another green dot island where I got farted on. He got me. Snuck up on me. Am I gonna die? Oh, there's a lot of seaweed. I collected through till day 108, and you can tell that I recorded this around Christmas time. It's a man, uh, a man, uh, running out of way. Rocking around the Christmas tree. Blah, 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 blah. I ran around to the other side of the island where I had another near fight encounter and collected the daylight hours away. I also hit up the trading post where I bought yet more bait. Spoiler alert, I bought way too much bait, as well as titanium ore. This island served me up a juicy haul of seaweed, and so it was time to return to Varuna Point. I kept busy on the way, there's always work to be done on the raft, and after a four day hiatus in search of seaweed, I returned to the abandoned construction. Site. I just realized I'm pretty sure I can get up there with the scaffolding. How did I not realize I can get up there? This story area wasn't entirely underwater after all. I found one of Olaf's rats up here, as well as another note from the grabber hinting that Bruno, the crazy guy from Bear Island, had visited Varuna Point briefly. And honestly, grabber and Bruno sounds like a glorious crossover. I climbed all the way up the scaffolding and then up the crane ladder and discovered I needed a crane key. I also found a blueprint for the electric grill and another note from the grabber. This one detailing that Ruben and Detto had visited Varuna Point too. I'm pretty sure all these characters are trying to get to Utopia so maybe I'll see them all there one day. For now though, there was nothing else for me up here, so I ziplined down. Whee! And I returned to fight the big chonker. All right, I'm gonna drink this. Am I swimming faster? Yeah, I am. I'm swimming pretty fast. So I'm feeling good. All right, he's here, he's here. Come on, mate. Come on. 
Come on. What are you doing? Stop goofing around. Is he dead? <gasps> He's dead. I can't believe how close I was. I had one more thing to do. He's giving me a lot of shark meat. That's biofuel for days. Rhino shark trophy. Let's go. So after four days of seaweed obsessed gallivanting across the entire ocean, it turned out I only needed one more hit and the big buffer keeled over. Oh well, I'll take it. I swam up and through to the grabber's headquarters. Wind turbine. Crane key, yeah, nice, nice. Wind turbine, charges batteries with wind power. Oh, nice, nice, nice. All right, we did it. Now, how do I get out of here? I swam out through the giant hole in the wall the rhino shark created and then sang this banger of a song. Up we go, climb into the crane, climb into the crane, we go, 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 win the yellow tube ladder thing. That was one of my worst songs ever. Oh, here we go. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just made a big hole. Let's go to the hole. Whee! I scrambled down this absolute mess and made my way to this room where I found a blueprint for advanced batteries, very juicy, as well as coordinates to my next destination. We know where we're going next. We're going to temperance. We did it. It took us two attempts over like 10 days, <laughs> but we did it. I then placed my rhino shark trophy. <laughs> Oh yeah. I grabbed some metal and fortified the foundations as this means sharks can't chew on them and this will ensure that no jealous sharks destroy my trophy. And I was very pleased to have this big boy showing off my battle prowess right at the front of the raft. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Subscribe if you're grateful I resisted using the rhino shark as a punchline for a your mum joke. Anyway, now that I had your mum strung up in all her glory on the front of my raft, it was back to drifting. I researched my new recipes at the research table and added another beehive to the setup. Five beehives, five beehives, five beehives. I drifted right next to an island and since I've got a lot of adventuring ahead, I decided to hit up the underwater area. Metal, copper, seaweed, clay, sand, scrap, all all of these are invaluable resources for about 100 different things, so it's a no-brainer. While out, I macheted Shampoo the Shark, Shamalama Ding Dong's favorite beauty product. After a successful swim, it was back to drifting, and it was time to finally finish up the engine room. On advice from some commenters, I now knew horizontal supports could be used as a basis to place vertical levels of flooring, meaning I didn't need to put pillars up everywhere. This was wonderful news, and it unlocked plenty of options for building vertically for the rest of the run. For now, it meant I could put a roof on the engine room, which would also function as flooring for another level of the raft. Basically, you've just got to space out the horizontal supports every two blocks, and then you'll be able to place all the flooring you need. They cost nails though, so they churn through the scrap. All this solid flooring costs heaps of planks too, so I ran completely dry, which put a pause on the project. Another day, another island, and I actually chopped down the trees on this one, which shows just how desperate I was for planks. Give me them. Planks. I also killed Shoe the Shark, Shampoo the Shark's favorite item of clothing. I hoovered up the ocean floor's bounty and then returned to drifting. I found another stack of wool to recycle and I also recycled my leather because I had lots so I figured why not. I then grabbed a big stack of metal bars and began fortifying the back of the raft. A decent plank stockpile had replenished so I got back to work completing the engine room. I made these antenna platforms a little less hideous which included removing the detail planks and using support beams instead and I repositioned the sail here. I also got some more flooring down collected a glorious bounty of extra planks from the collection nets and placed down most of the walls before running out of planks yet again. Fortunately, there's plenty to keep me occupied, staying on top of the raft's organization. And before long, I had another round of net collection to keep me going. So I got a lot more done, but once again, I ran dry of plankage. On day 114, I drifted into a trading post island. So I pillaged it for all it was worth. And as well as the usual titanium ore and scrap purchase, I grabbed some metal ore too, as I needed heaps to finish fortifying the raft. I made some more dirt plots with which I filled this gap in the animal farm and continued fortifying the raft's edge. I like this as my front. I think I wanna change this a little bit. Previously, I'd extended out the entire front of the raft, but with the addition of old mate Rhino Shark dangling in the middle, I decided I wanted to switch it up. And finalizing the perimeter was crucial as my intention was to fortify everywhere, so I needed to make up my mind. I ended up with this design, which I think looks much better, if only because it's more intentional. I then finally finished up the engine room, except this random spot was giving me trouble. It wouldn't let me place a foundation for some reason. Why can't I put a piece here? 
It makes no sense. While trying to sort it out, I got distracted by another island. On my swim over, I fought Chardonnay the shark, Shu the shark's favorite beverage. I spent all night collecting underwater, and on day 116, I availed myself of the island's finest timber. I placed 20 more foundation armor and then solved the puzzle of the stubborn missing piece. And with that, the engine room was finally complete. I also placed some stairs on either side, which took a little bit of finagling, but I got there eventually, and I think the symmetry is golden. I fortified a little more with some freshly smelted metal and then considered placing railings around the edge up here, but ultimately decided against it as it felt unnecessary. I finally investigated the new recipes I'd unlocked after Varuna Point. I made myself a wind turbine, and this big boy charges four batteries at once, making use of renewable wind energy. How very sustainable. I wanted to make some advanced batteries too, but I needed copper bars and I was fresh out. I had 49 copper ore to smelt, but I was too busy smelting metal so I could finish fortifying the foundations. One, two, three fully fortified let's go and now it doesn't matter how many generations of sharks you throw at me my raft is officially inedible i drifted upon another island so i had yet another relaxing time collecting materials with a short break to murder shambles the shark chardonnay the shark's general state of being once back on the raft it was chores as usual including making use of goat's milk for biofuel and i decided my smelting operation was simply too slow so i crafted a bunch of wet bricks and placed them on the deck to dry i made another wind turbine kept the trash cube machines chugging along and once the the bricks were dry, I made some space by getting rid of these outdated battery chargers, built some more smelters and chucked them down. I also had my inaugural usage of this wind turbine to recharge the trash compacted batteries. I drifted into yet another island, so you know what that means. Also rest in peace, Shimmy the Shark, Shambles favorite dance move. I also dried 20 more bricks and made two more smelters, bringing my smelter count up to 10. I then killed Mr. Schneebly the Shark, Shimmy the Shark's favorite character from Jack Black's classic movie School of Rock. And I collected goodies from yet another little island. My next drift victim was this big trading post island where I grabbed some dirt, made some choice purchases, and dug up some crappy treasure. And I don't know what came over me, but for some reason I chose not to gather the underwater materials from this island. Outrageous, I know. And on day 120, I made a discovery. Yes, the ropes definitely fill it up much faster. This is an improved strategy. Oh, they, they fill it up way faster. Twice as fast as palm leaves, to be precise, since ropes take two palm leaves to craft. I'd previously been getting rid of my palm leaves one at a time, which meant 120 presses of the E button per trash compactor, so this was an improvement. I also chucked in a bunch of plastic, as I had relatively few uses for it at this point. I then began work completing the border of trees around the animal farm, except I made a mistake. Oh no. No, 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 no. I accidentally made large crop plots rather than advanced large crop plots, which was a massive waste of nails and nails are at a premium. I consoled myself by picking bear this underwater zone and killing Shirley the shark, Mr. Schneebly's granddaughter, and later Arthur Shelby the shark, Shirley's favorite Peaky Blinder. Stabbed and then sliced, sliced. I then made some of the correct large crop plots and got to work. Cool. All right, so I'll just do a random array of trees. So five there, so I need five more, and then I can probably fit one, two, probably fit five there as well. I think I need 10 more. Fortunately, I had a fair bit of scrap stockpiled. So I turned a bunch of it into nails, as each of these costs 12. I placed down five more on the opposite side. I drifted into another island, so I collected some materials and then made myself an electric grill. How many potatoes can I cook at once with this thing? Steal the battery from here six at once. There's no beating the veggie soup though, so pointless. Pointless indeed. So I put this grill in a chest since I'd rather just use the cooking pots. I placed three more tree plots at the back of the animal farm and I think it looks quite nice. It certainly livens up the place having a bunch of trees around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Look at that big boy battery. Let's go. Those 10 advanced batteries cost me 40 titanium ingots. Pretty expensive, but definitely worth it as they hold three times the charge of the smaller, simple batteries. I chugged along with the chores and on the night of day 122, I spruced up the cottage's entrance a little. I placed a fence as well as some grass plots, which I think was quite an inspired design choice, if I may say so myself. I also made a third wind turbine and placed it in the center here, completing my battery charging setup. I placed some lanterns and fought Shiva the shark, namesake of a Hindu deity that Arthur Shelby the shark has never heard of, before whacking my big metal hook on some underwater goodies. I was fresh out of trading coins by this point, so I decided it was time to fish up some fancy fish. Time for some fishing. Next to my best friend, Fathead. Check out my running technique. <laughs> 
You gotta get those knees high when you're wearing flippers. Lift the knee, lift the knee. I spent the rest of the day fishing and that night hit up a green dot island where I collected a bunch of stuff before selling all the fish and making the usual titanium ore and scrap purchases. It's about time we hit up another d d d d destination. Temperance. Let's go to Temperance. Three, three, two, four. So I pointed myself at the blue dot about two kilometers away and whacked on the engine, making sure to fill my tanks with biofuel. On the way there, I cooked a bunch of veggie soup to restock my food supply and I also decided this big stupid towel was big and stupid. So I tore it down, which was actually kind of nice because I got a bunch of materials back. All right, well, that's gone now. RIP hideous tower. I continued cooking up soup and I also made some choice beverages as hydration is indeed a worthy concern. Oh, oh, what is that? That looks frosty. We can see in the peripheral. There's laser beams shooting at the sky. That is definitely snow, like ice, ice shelf. Oh, we made it to temperance. It's snowing. <laughs> I equipped myself appropriately and headed out to Frosty Town. This place looks huge. It's so cool. So frosty. I aggressively yoinked an electrical cable from this tower thingo and made my way over to this abandoned weird igloo village where I yoinked some more electrical cables. Hold up. Oh, hoo -hoo. Let's go. Before taking the snowmobile for a proper spin, I investigated the village some more. I found I could attach the electrical cables to these power pole thingos, so I began connecting them. Oh, okay, I need more cables. I've run out, I've used four, so I need to go salvage more from somewhere. Vending machine token, that's from Tangaroa. <laughs> what? So I don't think there's anything to do in this town except connect the electrical stuff. I did discover this nearby bunker though, which had weird green radioactive goopy stuff. So I couldn't enter without taking damage. I need some kind of uh, protective gear to go down there. I headed out in search of more electrical cables. Oh, oh, oh baby. That's a polar bear. Holy crap. Oh, he did a lot of damage to me. I collected electrical cables from three more towers and then stumbled upon this observatory. Note. I've already lost Miranda. I will not lose you too, Henry. The two of us have followed a signal box. I know it's from my sister. There's no doubt. Henry is skeptical. Oh he my gosh. The cold will be dangerous. I can't believe I didn't fall in. I think I was supposed to fall in. My reflexes are too razor sharp. <laughs> and that was Bruno. Bruno made it here. The, the Bruno is a crazy guy from um, Balboa Island. The bear island. Door is locked from the other side. I mean, I think I have to go in the hole anyway. I headed down and found I had to swim in this icy water infested by anglerfish. But once through, I climbed this giant ladder up to the ground floor of the observatory where I found a bunch of loot and another note. It was a rather cryptic post-it note with a picture of a scrap hook. I headed upstairs and found another post-it note. And right up top, I found yet another post-it note, a keypad locked safe and the controls to the telescope. Oh, Henry. The boat is ready to go. Detto is ready with the air horn. And Reuben can at least walk. Reuben as well. Henry is staying behind. It's bittersweet. Eto says there's a place with lots of people. That's crazy. Bruno ended up with Detto and Reuben, and they're all on their way to try find the people they're missing. Beautiful to behold. And clearly Bruno's mind is repairing a bit. He's no longer hearing voices from Henry. But it's nice to meet you, Henry. You have a nice square head. And I found a fourth post-it note. Number one is like a weird one of the dodo bird thingos. Number two is a puffer fish. Number three is the scrapbook. Number four is the raft. What does this mean? That was indeed the question. I noticed these constellation posters had numbers written on them, but I couldn't grasp what they represented. I played around with the telescope, admiring the galaxy and its raft themed constellations. And I knew I needed to get the code for the keypad from all of these clues, but it took me a while to piece it together. Oh, uh, hang on. I think I figured it out. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, okay, so the number relates to how many stars are in the constellation. All right, for the pufferfish, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that's the raft, that's four. One, two, three, four, five, six for the hook. The weird dodo, five. One, two, three, four, five. Counting the number of stars corresponding to each post-it note got me the four digit code I needed. There we go. All right, Celine key, some more vending machine tokens, advanced stationary anchor. Oh, sick, that's the anchor that you can control using the engine controls. So that's gonna be very handy to upgrade the raft. I decided to hold off investigating the skyward beams of light and instead return to the village with the six electrical cables I'd gathered. I connected a bunch more power poles, but something wasn't adding up. I've connected all the cables, I think, but so what? Oh, I need to connect it to here as well. I totally missed this note. Detto showed me and Henry some abandoned igloos. The boy got them open by fiddling with some cables. 
The big igloo is still shut though. I stole the last cable in the line and used it to connect everything to the generator and some of the village came alive. Does that mean I can get in to these places? Oh, I can. It's a gym. I looted all the igloos, collecting a good range of materials and some vending machine coins too. But I was just one electrical cable short of powering up the big igloo. So I headed off to find one. I had a vicious battle with another polar bear. Yeah, kind of epic in the snow. I found another radioactive bunker and I found a couple more towers with polar bears for me to brawl. Ugh. <laughs> he didn't even notice me. And electrical cables for me to yoink. Polar bear, polar bear. Polar, 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 polar bear. This to this. All right, we're into the big igloo. Okay. Oh, you can buy, you can use the tokens here. Hoo, hoo, hoo. All right, how many vending machine coins do I have? 14 again. All right, let's get, give me one of those penguin things. Give me one of those mugs. I then realized my bags were extremely full, so I resisted buying anything else just yet. I wandered upstairs and found the advanced biofuel refiner blueprint, as well as a bunch more loot. I then decided to dump a bunch of stuff to make space in my bags, and I bought one of everything from the vending machines, some rugs, paintings, and plants. And off I went to dump my bag load at the raft. Oh gosh. <laughs> it, it, did it just disappear? Damn it. I guess I'm running to find my raft. And it was definitely one of those I can't for the life of me remember where I parked my raft situations, but I found it eventually. I placed some of the decorative items here just to check them out, and then placed the dome sweet dome welcome mat down in front of the cottage, and a bunch of the plants arrayed on the grass here. I placed a couple of the paintings too. I dumped, restocked, and headed back out. After the devastating dematerialization of my previous snowmobile, I had to find myself another, which I used to make this sick jump. Yeah, let's go. There was some loot up here, but nothing too exciting. I headed up to the nuclear power plant. Why is one blowtorch? Where on earth? I'm almost certain I didn't miss anything at the observatory, but I maybe missed something at the igloo. Oh, yeah, okay. There's the blowtorch. It's just sitting on the table right where that blueprint was. All right, now let's try that again. Boing, boing. Boing, boing. All right, let's blowtorch this. A levitating blowtorch, goodness gracious me. I used the Selene key and in I went while slurping on a tropical bevy. It definitely had the appearance of something nuclear gone wrong down here. Insert control rods. I was sent to Selene alongside two colleagues, one of which I discovered was a mole by the investors. Sparrow was from all the way back at the radio tower, the very first story location. Evidently, she made it all the way here to work on the power source. I donned a glorious hazmat suit and headed down into the radioactive depths. There were three terminals with symbols for specific elements written next to them. And conveniently, there were posters up showing the atomic numbers. You may be disappointed to find out I don't have the periodic table memorized. So these posters were a godsend. I had a 25 second window in which to punch in all the codes and the door unlocked. Down the hallway, I found my first control rod. Look at this, man. Oh, there's like giant bugs in there. What is this, fallout? I chucked on another hazmat suit and climbed down to an area where I had to endlessly turn this valve while being assaulted by mutant bugs. And once I got the door open, I found control rod number two. The final stretch before control rod number three was a series of laser plus mirror puzzles that I used to open doors. This first one was pretty simple, but the next one was a bit more elaborate. It was ultimately pretty straightforward though, as I rotated these mirrors until the door gave way. I grabbed the final control rod and another note. Sparrow explained that the power source being developed here was meant to power the floating cities like Tungaroa, but they needed more people to help develop a working reactor. She wondered if the people at the mysterious Utopia might be able to help, but she'd heard worrying news. One Olaf Wilkstrom had descended upon the place. Bad news indeed, as we all know Olaf is an evil goose on the loose. All the control rods were in place, but they got stuck somehow, so I had to head down into the belly of the reactor to sort it out. There were a few easily dispatched bugs, and then it was just a matter of lowering all three control rods into place. And in you go, number three. Is this gonna fix the meltdown? It did. Yeah, it did. Nice. I'm pretty sure I just solved the energy crisis. You're welcome. I wandered down this frosty hallway and found the final room of this story location. Okay. Utopia. <gasps> Electric smelter. Yes. Don't have to use infinite planks to fuel my smelting anymore. Looks like it fits three things at once as well. So good. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, what the heck? Old mate was in cryo sleep or something. Another playable character. Shogo, the golden beam of light. Here he goes, here he goes. Oh! 
And with that, I was done. And I had the coordinates for Utopia, where I'm hoping I'll finally catch up to Olaf so I can slap him silly. I paid a visit to those two bunkers I'd found earlier, and they were now radiation free. They had a bunch of loot for me, including some titanium ore, which is always a juicy find. This thing goes vertical. That's glorious. Whee! I dematerialized a second snowmobile and returned to my raft after a successful expedition at the frosty Isle of Temperance. Electric smelter, let's go. Advanced biofuel, sweet. Advanced stationary anchor, beautiful. I made myself an advanced stationary anchor, which I placed down. Now this drops the anchor. Beautiful, very convenient. I also made an advanced biofuel refiner and this can connect straight into the fueling system via pipes. It holds a lot more honey and raw food too. So my guess is it produces five or six biofuel containers worth. And since it pumps the fuel directly into the engines, it obviously saves me the trouble of manually inserting fuel. Although I do have tons of biofuel lying around if I need it. And I made a second one, finalizing my fuel setup. I also crafted 40 wet bricks as I need 10 dry bricks per smelter. Bricks, 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 bricks. They were ready to go on day 130, so I made myself four electric smelters. By the way, all of these higher tier items cost a fair few titanium ingots. For example, these smelters cost six each. I knew I wanted the smelters in this area up here. I just wasn't exactly sure how to arrange them. So I spent ages trying to make it feel right. I eventually ended up with a setup like this. I placed a couple of storage chests, crafted four advanced batteries, and transferred all my smeltable materials up to this new production area. Three to time, let's go. Just like that, my concurrent smelting capacity went up from 10 to 12, and I no longer had to burn infinite planks for smelting, just renewable wind energy harnessed into batteries. You are welcome, Mother Nature. I then decided to turn it into an enclosed room, as random smelters on the deck wasn't great for the vibe. I had all the walls up by the time day 131 rolled around, but before I got onto the roof, I swam over to this frosty green dot island. It featured some polar bears, some treasure, some loot, and of course, a trading post. I did a round of chores before settling on an idea for the smelting room's roof. I figured some ventilation was in order, so I placed a bunch of support poles and ended up with a design that looks like this. I kept the raft machine ticking along while I dreamt up a plan for how to continue building vertically. I decided I wanted to avoid walls as much as possible and instead try my best to make the design fairly open with visibility out to sea as a priority. I placed a bunch of support poles outlining the structure I had in mind, both up here opposite the smelting room and also down next to the cottage. So I'm thinking like, like a dining kind of area here and then just kind of build it up and I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I needed an enormous amount of scrap to make all the nails for these posts, and I needed even more for the horizontal supports. So when I saw this big island, you better believe I went scrap hunting and every other material hunting too, but scrap was definitely high on the list. I hit up the land first where I made a few purchases, dug up some goodies and caught myself another llama. Flop neck. Flop neck. Ow! Run, run flop neck. We're under attack. Flopneck is llama number three. I had originally planned to just stick with two of each animal, but now that I knew how good wool was as a trash compactor insert, I was keen to get a bunch more llamas. I spent the night collecting underwater, where I also macheted Shayla the shark, Shiva's most loyal worshiper. I emerged on day 134 with a decent haul of materials. I filled my bag with planks and nails and continued working on the new build. I made a ladder here, placed all the necessary horizontal supports, and placed down flooring to create an entirely new elevated level. It looked a little something like this. I placed some ladders to connect the three staggered levels and then place the support beams and flooring over this area. We didn't run out of nails. Good news. Good news. It felt great to have some genuine verticality appear on my previously very flat raft. By the way, and this really goes without saying, I also did lots of chores, including continuing to make biofuel on these old school biofuel refiners for some reason. As a celebration of verticality, I made a little zip line setup. I cleaned up this underwater zone and this is a pretty juicy haul for just a little island. Not bad, not bad. Also, look at how my smelting chests are coming along. I made 20 plants using clay and palm leaves and used these to populate the entrance way to my cottage. I strongly believe more plants is always a top tier design strategy. I then filled my bags with a bunch more decorative stuff and tried my best to turn this area here into a grand piano feature. This included Major Tom perched on the table. I added a rug here and I think this looks like a pretty decent place to chill out. I then began work on a bathroom area up here because it's about time I pooped and cleaned myself now that it's been 137 days. Just poop while admiring the open ocean. 
Let's go. I love that. I then bounced down to this area and began work on a dining setup. And I put a flag up here. As you can see, I was moving around a lot working on these areas. And that's because I had no idea what I was doing. I was just trying out random things as inspiration struck, hoping that at some point it'd all come together. I built up some walls around the bathroom because privacy is important. All right, so here's the deal. You got privacy ship side, but then... You got ocean views. Yeah, you can see out the window while you're pooping. No problem. No problem. I continued decorating, including an attempt to make a funny sign. Poop and wipe. Pooping. Pooping. I made a little shelf with some choice toilet time reading material and then added a roof. In the roofing process, I made some adjustments, including moving the window and removing the epic pooping sign because I realized how stupid it was. I also placed down a hammock on which I unintentionally slept through the night. I wasn't too fussed though because it is important to get those eight hours. With that glorious project complete, for now at least, I said, I mean, it's something. I then experimented with some red paint and actually managed to achieve some good results. Oh. That's kind of cool. Oh, you can do all patterns and stuff. Ah. Ha ha. I didn't know I could do that. Let's go. I spent some time relaxing with some friendly raft chores and exploitation of a tiny island's resources, and then some more chores and the exploitation of a different tiny island's natural resources. I also demolished Shama the Shark, Shayla's big toe. That was most relaxing of all. And here's another smelting chest update. As you can see, my hoard of materials grows nicely. I then placed a bunch of lanterns. New light there, two more at the back of this farm, animal farm, a bunch of light up here, two up here, one here, and then three over here. I might take out this middle one. I think it's overkill. I had tons of plastic piling up, so I trash cubed a bunch and then crafted more storage chests, which I placed along here. This space was allocated as a dump for ocean floaties since the first wall of chests was beginning to overflow. Yet another island met the fury of my scrap hook and I even collected all the flowers from this one because why not? I then placed a couple of decorative palm trees down as I figured these would go well to fill space and add some natural vibrance. Another trading post island was on the horizon, so I fished up some fancy fish to sell when I got there. Once once there, I caught llama number four. Shaggy! I just realized Flopneck's little. Look how small Flopneck is compared to the other three. Good for you, Flopneck. Back on the island, I tracked down some treasure while Pumba gave me a hard time. You can't get me. Ow! Never mind, you can. I collected dirt, climbed about 400 kilometers up this giant mountain, made some choice deals, and then returned to dump the haul I'd gotten from the land before jumping into the sea as day 143 dawned. Get macheted, you dingus. That was Shadow the Shark the one who followed Shammer everywhere. I admired the unconvincing positioning of my anchor and then collected the day away. And then something upsetting happened. I can't kill it fast enough. It's so frustrating. How do you kill those? You must have to just kill them with... Am I dead? What? Whatever. Whatever. I lost my bottle. Since when does it just kill you? It doesn't. What actually happened was I let myself drown without realizing at all. Though I must give full credit to that fart for distracting me from my need to breathe. As you can tell, I was only mildly frustrated. It's no big deal. But that's why you should never underestimate an underwater fart. The worst part was the loss of my canteen because I had no leather to make a new one. So I grabbed my water bottle and went out to murder some animals. I got revenge on Pumba and he provided three leather. And then I had a wild goose chase after this goat. So I guess it was more of a wild goat chase. He, he do, yes. He doesn't drop anything? Oh, I just, oh my gosh. Look at this poor innocent goat. I just murdered it for no reason. Well, that's awkward. So I wasn't able to make that new canteen just yet. I jumped back into the water, this time with a bow and some arrows in case I came across any more prodigious farters. I spent the whole night down there and managed to get some petty revenge by shooting this pufferfish in the face a few times. Rather than drift, I decided to actually head straight for a green dot for once. And on the way there, I replaced a bunch of tools that had been decimated by the unfortunate incident with the flatulent fish. I refilled the biofuel refiners in the engine room too. Once on the island, I found some vault treasure with a painting in it, very nice. And after hitting up the trading post, I found Found llama number five. This is a fancy looking llama. Is he fancy looking? He looks a bit different. I feel like the two tone is different. Two tone the llama. The llama herd grows. I put the painting of the pot of flowers up here, most excellent, and then hunted down a warthog for leather. But killing just a warthog felt a bit off, so I killed Shavan the shark, Shadow's accountant. I then drank this spicy beverage that increases swim speed, and this helped me zoom around the underwater area. And by my count, the buff lasted 10 minutes. There was also one of these deep divey bits with heaps of goodies, which is always a bonus. When I emerged, I pointed the raft at another green dot island. This is not a frost 
Frosty Island. Frosty Frosty. I wonder if they have llamas on the Frosty Frosty Islands. There were no llamas on the Frosty Island. Just angry bears and a lively marketplace. I made a bunch of shears because I was collecting lots of wool from my five llamas. And I then decided it was time to double my honeycomb production. I crafted five more hives and a bunch of advanced small crop plots and made a carbon copy of my existing hive setup, which is finicky business getting all the placements just right. But I got there eventually. It's good because it fills in the area a bit. Like otherwise the area was pretty sparse. It's nice to have something functional chilling there. I also placed three purely decorative flower pots on this side, which I think was a tasteful touch even the greatest designers should aspire to. I crafted a bunch more decorative items and rejigged this space a little. One big change was replacing the lanterns that were here with these string lights. I also set the table and put a big candle thingo in the middle. I put a little cupboard with a sunflower on top over here, some string lights over the kitchen area, and a sitting area next to the warthog. Pumba's hangout corner. You'll love to see it. I added a couple of plants to this area and then transformed this wall, turning it into a trophy display. Doofus, zippy zap, and Boris. I then made a most excellent discovery. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize I could do this. Just randomly hang a bunch of dingoes. Okay, wh how, what do we do with this information though? The answer to that question is put a bunch of danglies over here. I also realized I could stick pot plants straight onto walls. So that was good news too. I made some more large crop plots and placed a couple in this dead space here and two more up near the poop chute as well. While I was admiring the work I'd done zhuzhing up the place, I was struck with another idea. It's, it's, not, it's not great privacy. You're chilling in the tub. Would you be satisfied with that privacy with a giant gap between your curtain? To be honest, who cares? I did some chores, placed another tree up here next to the piano area, got cooking some veggie soup because I was running quite low, and then fished for a bit as I approached this trading post island. Once I got there, I found something unexpected. Tiki piece? What? I had no idea I could find these, but I am a big fan. Yeah, why not? That's pretty cool. And then I had some trouble catching this llama, mainly because I randomly picked up a black flower while carrying it, which made me drop it. And of course it pranced away, so I had to catch it again. All right, you can be called elusive. Because you gave me a headache. I then drank another swim speed beverage and headed underwater. This session went through the night and into day 152, and it was a pretty juicy haul. Over 60 scrap and almost 100 seaweed. It is time to hit up Utopia 6349. Six, Alright, straight ahead apparently. Utopia, they said it wasn't real. But there it is, two and a half k's away. On the way there, I did a couple of chores and then found inspiration to build a little bar slash chill out zone up here. I went for a leafy vibe and set up some of these tall tables with stools. And while I was working on the interior, I spotted our destination. That's Utopia, I guess. Doesn't look like it's in the best shape. It's a raft there, I think. Woo! We made it. As I drifted nearer, I continued playing around with the design. It's like a, like a raft kind of city built on the remnants of some really tall skyscrapers. I held off beginning my investigation of the mysterious utopia because I had a room to finish designing. I got it looking like this, and then I decided to make the ceiling a real dangly heaven. I guess that's a vibe. If we can, if we walk in like this, not bad. You can hang out in here. All right, yeah, that looks kind of cool. All right, I better go investigate this island, man. And so I got my bags organized and headed over. There was a big water tank and it looked like there was something in there for me. So I just needed to raise the water level somehow. Oh, lots of dirt. We love dirt. Ah! Okay, never mind. Not lots of dirt. But look how cool this this settlement was. I came upon this spinny thing, and this seemed like it was part of the puzzle to get the water into the tank. In fact, there were three of these spread out around the farm area. There were also some free shovels, which is always a bonus. And I found a water pump, but it required electricity. I mean, I've got batteries on my boat. Do you want me to bring batteries? So this is the electricity is coming from over there, it looks like. The big motor. Okay, let us check up. Another shovel, so many shovels. All right, we got a note. Ghetto's Utopia Journal. Super secret. I have my own raft and it's hooked up to actual wind turbines. If I had even more power, just imagine all the experiments I could run. But now that lunatic Olaf appeared, his cages are already unloaded and now he's promising to help everyone with his army. Olaf Rookstrom ruined Caravan Town. I will never forgive him. I hope Han and Ruben listen to me. He's not to be trusted. So it seems like all of our favorites made it to Utopia, but so did the stinky Olaf. That is clearly bad news. One harpoon, one carbon dioxide canister. Who am I shooting harpoons at? 
probably at that giant red X. I also needed a code of some sort to access Detto's room down here, so I had some work to do. I began systematically exploring the rest of the boardwalks. I found a door to one of the skyscrapers that required two entrance keys, some vending machine tokens, and this thoroughly chained building that required a master key. The list of things I had to find certainly grew pretty long pretty quickly. I headed over to this area and discovered these crates that I could pick up and move around. What the? How do I drop this crate? What is this? Ah! It's got me! These hyenas are no doubt a creation of our good friend Olaf. They didn't really do much damage to me. It's kind of terrifying finding them in the dark though. <laughs> It's like a hyena playing fetch with a bottle. I checked out the generator looking thingo and it needed an electrical cable. I found my first cable tucked around here, but I couldn't find where to connect it. Obviously the crates were a part of the puzzle, so I piled them up to gain access to the roof of one of the buildings. Okay, we made it up here. Is that good? It was indeed good, as I found another electrical cable, as well as a power pole to connect the cables to. There were also two zip lines to neighboring buildings, but for some reason I didn't have my zip line tool equipped. My guess is it broke when I got farted on earlier, so as day 155 dawned, I headed back to the raft to craft a new one. When I returned, I zip lined across here, tiptoed across this pole, and connected the first cable. No. 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 Four hits? Weak. Stop dancing. Stop dancing. I found some more cables and connected a second across here, a third across here, collected a couple more cables and finished up connecting the power. We're electrified. It's gonna start pumping. Yeah, it's pumping water. It's pumping water. This spinny puzzle was straightforward in concept. Obviously you've got to line up the pipes, but I'll be honest, I was just rotating them willy nilly and hoping. Oh, I did it. I, I did it completely accidentally. All right, <laughs> that one's done. Let's go. It's going. It's going. All right, we follow it. We follow it along. It's undulating. And then we're up to this one. It was the same again for spinny puzzle number two. Oh, we did it. How? I don't, okay, that one was also mostly accidental. And a repeat yet again for puzzle number three. All right, that worked. Just keep spinning until it works. Okay, it's filling up now. Inside the tank was a carbon dioxide canister, but I still lacked a harpoon. I also was yet to find any of the keys or codes I needed for the various locked doors. And I had no idea what I was missing. So I wandered around all night like a goose on the loose trying to figure out where I'd gone wrong. Oh, what? How did I not see this before? Entrance key. Do not trust Olof Wilkström. When he arrived here, we took his word in good faith. He exploited us at every turn. Now all of us, dissenters, are locked up, which is everyone by my count. To anyone reading this, Olaf should be up in the marketplace. Beware of his rabbit beasts. Please take the master key from him. Set us free. Set Utopia free! Don't trust Olaf, it's not rocket science. Come on, guys. So now I had one entrance key at least, but I still suffered from a distinct lack of harpoon. I continued wandering around, and finally I took a better look at the map on Dedo's house. Oh. Hang on. Yeah, so as you can see, there are three red circles, which I totally missed when I looked at this map earlier. Those circles indicated where the parts of Dedo's code were buried. So I dug those up and finally accessed Dedo's shack. There were a bunch of materials and a most exciting blueprint. Big, ba oh, big backpack, nice. I also found the harpoon at long last. But I'm going straight to make a big backpack. Except I needed 10 wool. And while I was able to collect six from my llamas, I still needed four more. So my dreams of a bigger backpack were delayed. I took the opportunity to empty my bag and then returned to shoot a harpoon. <laughs> Let's go. Wee boing. All right. Nice. There's my other entrance key. I took another zip line down right to the entrance. Here we go. We're in. I headed up the elevator and found myself on precarious platforms hugging the side of the skyscrapers, with nets strung up to catch me should I step a foot wrong. I found a pulley system thingo that said requires cogwheel, but it seemed the only option I had was to parkour through this mile high obstacle course. Ah, ah, ah. What am I doing? It was a bunch of jumping, crouching, falling, and failing, but I got there eventually. You may notice the sun rose, so that gives you an indication of how long it took me. At the end, I found a hammer and an elevator that required a cogwheel. I headed back to the start and used the hammer to break through this padlock. Go on, whack it. Whack it with the hammer. I will only say this once. Leave on your raft. Leave Utopia to me. It's Olaf. Or else, 
The forward scouts end with you. Olaf, you cheeky bugger. Actually came face to face with Olaf. After all this time following in the wake of Olaf's evil shenanigans, I had finally caught up with the weird bloke. There was a funky scale pulley system puzzle here, and it was just a matter of getting the right amount of weight on there so the cog stopped at the right level on the other side. Basically, I just added and removed these weights until the maths added up. I grabbed the cogs and headed through to the next area. Look around! The filthy rafters turned luxury apartments into a scrapyard. Relieving them of the responsibility was the only decent thing I could do for them. I can't believe how ungrateful all of you are. Olaf, you're a lunatic. I don't know if you know, but you are... You are crazy. It was more of the same, except there were more levels to work with, so the maths was a little more complicated. But before long, I was moving forward with my cogs. Simple mathematics. I headed down and found I'd reconnected with the parkour area, except now I had the cogs I needed to repair the elevator. Put the cog on here, send that back, and now I've got to do the, I got to do the parkour again. But I'm so bad at the parkour. Parkour, parkour. Parkour. I did it pretty quickly this time. Clearly I am a parkour prodigy and I chucked the cog into the elevator and headed up. Check out the view. It's actually pretty sick. I then stacked a bunch of crates in what was very obviously the wrong spot. I have no idea what I was thinking, but I worked it out eventually. Oh, what am I doing? This is where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> you had your chance to leave, but you just won't listen. So fine. Have it your way! Welcome to Utopia! <laughs> I could do this all day! What the heck? He's throwing bombs at me. That's not on. That's rude behavior. I did my best to avoid Olaf's fireworks as I stacked up crates, all the while enduring his sledging as he bombarded me. I'm coming for you. Retreat. Regroup. Regroup. Die! Infantry. Die, Olaf! Electric zipline tool. Warehouse key. Well, that was an exciting battle. Olaf is crazy. I don't know if we've mentioned that before. You can ride up or down ziplines. That's cool. That's very cool. I headed out and made my way around. Look how cool this is, man. This is a, this is a wonderful design for the last zone. I opened up the warehouse door and dropped this ladder, which connects to the starting area for ease of access later. And I headed through to chase down big bad Olaf. I was forced to drop down into this hyena infested area while Olaf yelled some nonsense at me. I killed the three hyenas, but I had the strange feeling I was being watched. Look at these creepy eyeballs, man. How many monsters do you have in there? Ah! He's throwing bombs at me again. More hyenas were released and I foolishly allowed myself to be distracted by them, but eventually I realized that they weren't gonna stop coming, so I just needed to focus on stacking crates. But apparently I am an absolute goose when it comes to stacking crates in the correct spot, because for some reason I stacked them here, rather than at the obviously signposted location I was supposed to. How do I? Oh, I should've been going over there. I'm so stupid, man. It was quite stressful avoiding bombs and running away from hyenas, so that is my excuse. I bounced back and forth like a silly willy while constantly harangued by the hyenas, but I got there eventually. One more. Don't do it. <laughs> ah! That's terrifying. Stop! Stop! I'm getting chain grabbed. All right, all right. I think I'm good. Let's just get some health back. Oof. I headed up these stairs, through this walkway, and came upon a rather disturbing arena. What is this thing? I don't have the HP for this. Look at this radioactive bear. I decided I better head back to the raft and restock before taking on the radioactive beast. And this provided an opportunity to collect some more wool and craft myself the big backpack. Ooh, an extra row, let's go. I crafted some extra weaponry and made the long climb all the way back up. Come on then. A survivor. You see, the weak are singled out. The strong remain. You forward scouts were the same. You build yourselves up from nothing. You keep going until you encounter something stronger. Alpha, in position. Kill! Goodness gracious me. 
is leaving acid. I kited the alpha and shot arrows at him, and it worked okay, except for that one time he ate my face. Periodically, Olaf threw food to the big fella, which caused him to become invulnerable for a bit, and prompted special attacks like this one where he chucked stinky rocks at me. The fight raged on, and the floor became increasingly acidic, and eventually I ran out of arrows and switched to my machete. I was forced to use some healing salves too. Hey, we did it. That was intense. Yeah, boy. <laughs> All right, Olaf, you're next, mate. Got a machete with your name on it. I rode the elevator up to the top level and it was time to give Olaf a sternly worded reprimand. There's nothing you can do. Stay away. All of this is Thank you for the master key. And titanium tools. Oh, oh, let's go. All right, well, see ya, Olaf. Um, hang tight. <laughs> Got him. I headed back down and made my way to make use of the master key. It's gonna free all my friends, I think. <gasps> A cinematic? When the ocean itself broke civilization, the survivors were left with nothing. True. Yet they persisted. <gasps> the forward scouts rose it's up Dedo. from the wreckage, defied our flooded world, and brought back hope. Now Utopia stands free once again thanks to their actions. With this final chance, we can begin the slow and difficult road to recovery. From today on, we are all forward scouts, ready to discover the next step for humanity. Inspirational. Oh, epic music. Glorious. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. We did it. We did it. So at last, everyone was free. And for my part, I had free reign to burgle fruit from the marketplace, so that was nice. Yeah, give it to me. Give me them fruits. I can't believe we ended up like that. Listening to Olaf was a mistake, to say the least. I need to get better at reading people. Agreed, Larry. Yes, Olaf did seem a bit maniacal. Well, I stole all your fruit, so... I guess we were even. There was a vending machine that sold what appeared to be food danglies, so I bought a bunch, as I'd found heaps of vending machine tokens in my journey through Utopia. I chatted to many of the NPCs and they all basically just admitted they were stupid to trust Olaf, which is a fair assessment of events. There were two more vending machines with decorative danglies and plants, so I bought a bunch of those as well, and then ran into my old friends for the first time in the flesh. Bruno? No way. I also found a caged Olaf. Hi Olaf. I am happy. Thanks for asking. No one ever listens to me. Maybe they'll listen after this. Yeah, I did. I feel you. This Olaf fellow doesn't seem like the nicest type. Bruno! I made space in my bags and bought a few more decorative goodies, ensuring that I bought a few of each item available, and then bounced between Detto and Bruno, listening to their voice lines, which seemed to never run out. Eventually, I got bored of that and decided to leave all the Utopia gooses to their peace. Peace that I earned for them, battling a rabid radioactive monster. You're welcome, you silly nerds. And with that, I had completed the story of Raft. Honestly, that was a pretty epic finale. And it seems there is hope this settlement can work towards a prosperous future future, especially if they can avoid trusting any future Olafs. But I still had 41 days until the 200 day mark, so that meant plenty of time to tie up loose ends and of course to make my raft as glorious as possible. The first thing I did was figure out a way to make use of my food danglies, and the obvious way to achieve that was to build a structure over my kitchen area. That's cool. Yeah, 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 nice. Nice. I then went to town placing the hanging decorations. My approach was to evenly space them, but place them in no particular order. All right, we've got danglies everywhere now. Can't go wrong with danglies. There's no denying it. The danglies are top tier. I added a couple of lanterns too. I decided it would be fitting to honor the fallen hyenas in Alpha with some trophies. And Olaf's mum. <laughs> 
<laughs> gotcha. And Olaf's got pride of place out here. I've run around placing plants everywhere, enhancing some of the existing areas, and I hung up some of the glowy bottle things too. I also decorated the anchor area with some dangling decorations, which I think worked well to add a little spice. I did likewise above the piano hangout zone, and I also added more danglies to the ceiling of the bar area. After that decorative rampage, I returned to some more menial chores, such as crafting a bunch of shears and looking after my animals. This is me collecting honeycomb and running the length of my deck, just so you can get a sense for the vibe on the raft as the sun rose on day 162. Honestly, I was proud of it already. I made some more plants and stuck them here on the wall of the crop farm and then tended to my animals again. By this point, I rarely bothered putting anything in the recyclers besides wool, so I was doing my best to shear the llamas on the regular. I added some of the glowy bottles to the hanging garden type deal in here, and here's an update on my smelting chests. I added an extra one to accommodate overflowing resources. Very nice. I admired my raft for a bit and then decided it was time to fire up the engines. I think we jet towards Tangaroa now, because I have unfinished business there. Big juicy golf ball, here I come. On the way there, I set up a new animal farm area because I had ambitions to catch more llamas. This included crafting a bunch more grass plots and a couple of sprinklers. I made a couple more advanced large crop plots and planted more palm trees, and then I arrived at Tungaroa. Firstly, I bought a radio from the vending machine, and I was hoping that vending machine tokens would have respawned so I could collect them and buy some more decorative stuff. Secondly, I had intel from a comment that suggested there was a secret room to be found in one of the elevators. Is it this lift or is it a different lift? It was a different lift. Yeah. Hmm. This is the soundtrack of my life. Oh, I can get more strawberries. Nice. I think it's this elevator. I swear someone said it was... Oh! There it is. Minus eight, minus nine, minus 10. All right, we're 20 levels below here. There was a bunch of good loot down here, the most exciting of which was the elevator cassette. Nothing too mind blowing, but a nice little hidden bonus. Vending machine tokens and all other items had indeed respawned, so I ran around collecting for a while. I bought as many Tungaroa plants as I could because I love plants. Back on the raft, I placed the radio down here next to the hammock and inserted the EDM cassette I found ages ago. And I placed a bunch of the plants around the place, most notably these hanging pots. All right, next loose end, Balboa Island. I got a bear to kill. This trading post island was on the way, so I stopped there first, collecting some bees, treasure, and choice purchases. I also collected underwater for a little bit. One of the purchases I made on this island was a fridge, and I tried putting it in here as I figured it'd make sense to have easy access to beverages when hanging out up here, but the fridge was too big and ugly, so I got rid of it. Soon enough, I arrived at Balboa Island. The goal was to take down the terrifying mama bear, because the last time I shot like 40 arrows at her and I had no luck. There were two problems though. I didn't really have an improved plan as to how I was going to defeat her and I got extremely lost. I came here to fight Mama Bear, but the true enemy is my sense of direction. There she is finally found her. As I said, I really didn't have a plan, so I just started shooting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, yeah. So about that. Considering that took me like five hours to find her and I'm not gonna be able to find her again and then I'm just gonna die, I can't, I can't be bothered. I'm bailing from trying to kill Mama Bear. You can live, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Let's go to a green island instead. And there you have it, folks. Definitive proof I am indeed a god tier gamer. I then began work on a structure atop the smelting room. And I didn't really know what this was going to be. I just wanted more verticality. It was indeed vertical as it became the highest point on the raft. I made a zip line over to it. And this was actually the only way to access up here without doing parkour on top of the sail. And I crafted some large crop plots and lined them up on the smelting room's roof. In the middle tier, I placed tons of plants. And by tons of plants, I mean tons of plants. And up the top, two nests for seagulls, which meant this random tower did actually have a function as these nests will yield me some feathers. I also placed a zip line down from the top and I think this definitely wins the award for the most random addition to my raft, but it looks pretty good, so why not? I continued chipping away at all the necessary chores and I also made tweaks and additions to raft design whenever inspiration struck. I used up most of my explosive powder to make a bunch of net canisters for llama capturing and then randomly remembered I had some new researchers to unlock. The only tool I made for now was a titanium hook and I would have made the electric zip line tool, but I was dead out of scrap as I'd used it all up making nails for the random nest tower I'd just built. I was also low on trading post coins, so I fished up some special fish before heading onto the island I'd arrived at. Vision, vision, vision. Fishing. Unfortunately, none of my treasure hunting was possible on this island as I'd already been here. Somehow I navigated back to the island I'd visited before the successful gamer moment on Balboa Island. I did at least sell the fancy fish I'd caught. I also tested out my titanium hook and it collected stuff quickly and seemed to be quite durable. I drifted day 168 away, getting in the raft zone where it's just relaxing to stay on top of jobs around the raft. I also began making an enormous amount of veggie soup because I figured why not make an enormous amount of veggie soup. This was to the extent that I actually used my crop 
crop farm for the first time in like 100 days as I harvested and replanted a bunch of beets and potatoes. I arrived at an island on which I caught my seventh llama. Got a dingus, so you can be dongus. Beautiful. And we'll put you here. This prompted me to move over all my llamas to make shearing simpler. I then spent a night and a day collecting underwater while benefiting from a swim speed buff. I added a few more chests to my storage area. My storage walls are complete. And that's 32 chests total, about half of which were already full of decorative items, old batteries, and useful trash from the sea. Got a few veggie soups flying around now. Not bad, not bad. I had another sojourn to a big island where I did the usual and was lucky to find llama number eight. Plurpen. Plurpenstein. Plurpen, Plurpenstein, Plurpenstein. Depending on your pronunciation, distinguished Plurpenstein Stein. Man, my raft looks glorious. Am I, am I a design genius? I hit up another big island featuring some vertical rock face treasure digging. There was no llama on this island, which was cause for considerable outrage. And also this warthog chased me into a cave. I was zooming from green dot to green dot at this point. So the engines were going pretty much constantly, which meant I was refilling the advanced refiners pretty regularly. Fortunately, I had plenty of raw food and animal heads to use and no shortage of honey either. I crafted a huge amount of rope, collected my rather large buildup of titanium ingots and finally upgraded my collection nets. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh, dude, these are expensive. I removed the old raggedy nets and popped down these shiny new ones. Oh, they look really nice. They look crispy and they match the improved flooring. How many more do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more. Before making the remaining nets, I decided to stop and look for treasure at this little island. And I was very glad that I did. What the heck? This safe is ridiculous. It's got a toy robot, a rock cassette, EDM. I've already got EDM, but still a real self-portrait, a remnant of a mysterious collective. Let's listen to the rock cassette. Cassette collection's looking decent, you know? Uh, what's this real self-portrait? That's like handsome Squidward. <laughs> I feel like he should go here. I then finished up with the collection nets. Fully upgraded line of nets. Looking schmick. Schmick. These improved nets hold 15 items maximum instead of 10, which is a handy little upgrade, meaning I won't have to empty them quite so often. I was swimming in plastic, so I decided to recycle about two chests worth. And then I put up my screecher trophies. Bird idiot and bigger bird idiot. Hidden away in the engine room where no one ever has to see their ugly, hideous, stupid heads. I also spruced up the outside wall of my old production hub with, you guessed it, plants. And I finally remembered to craft an electric zipline tool and it was predictably fun. Zhoo, boing. Nice. And on day 175, I discussed the merits of experimenting with paint. The other thing I could try, I could do some painting. I don't know what I would paint. I kind of like the raw brown vibe with green as kind of like the secondary color. It's just very natural vibe from all the plants and leaves. And then little accent colors, you know, the red on the flag. I don't know, I like that vibe. So I don't know if I really want to paint. I caught Wiggles the llama and then availed myself of the island's resources. Oh, and here's a smelting chest update. And when visiting this little island after what felt like a long drought of shark murder, I killed Shushu Shushu the shark, Sharvan's dad. I decided I didn't like the stacked small crop plots because even though it was efficient, it was annoying. So I spaced them out without any stacking and locked off my crop farm setup. While at it, I harvested and replanted. Titanium sword. Yo, ha, hoi, hiya. I had an uneventful visit to this island where I weirdly chose not to try out my new sword. And on day 177, I played around with paint for ages. And long story short, I decided I hate it and don't want to use it, except on the odd piece of furniture. I also placed some logs in here, very loggy. And on day 178, I created perhaps the greatest installment yet. All the playable characters, Bruce, or any number of relatives of Bruce at the island. And we got, that's actually my character. I think his name's Ruhi, having a fish. These are the four craftable paintings, and I'm sure you agree my little art gallery is quite glorious. To celebrate, I killed Shake It, Shake It, the shark, Shushu Shushu's wife. All right, we're whipping out the titanium sword. Oh, that was a quick turn. He got chopped up pretty fast. The first victim of my titanium sword. Let's go see what we can find on this island. I found treasure, white flowers, a warthog that died in four strokes of my titanium blade, vertical trash treasure, and a llama. You know what rhymes with llama? Obama the llama. I did nothing but chores on day 179. And full disclosure, this is when I began sleeping through the night, just to speed things along a bit. And to be fair, you can't argue with some Z's on a hammock strung under the stars. Another one of these doofuses.
<laughs> Why? I decided I might as well catch this island's goat, as there was space in the goat slash dodo enclosure, so why not? Horn star. Hornster, let's dance, let's dance. Oh, you die fast when I've got this big old sword. This particular dancer was named Shaq, son of Shake It, Shake It, and Chushushushu. I killed him on the way to catching this dodo chicken weirdo. Peanut. Peanut is your name. All right, now I think it's time we head back to Bear Island. Mama Bear must die to prepare myself for the travails ahead. Some titanium arrows. There we go, 18 titanium arrows. Couple of bows, helmet, body armor, greaves. All right, we got the armor. <laughs> there we go, we look ready. I also decided I wanted the catfish meal that increases run speed, except I had zero catfish. So I got to fishing. Oh, what the? Wait, whoa, 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 what is this? Why is there a flag on this island? Yo, that's a shipwreck. I've never seen this before. Is this like a rare, this must be super rare. I've never seen this before. Whoa, what the heck, man? Not now, you psycho. Got an achievement, oh captain, my captain. There's a radio in here? Captain's hat as well? <laughs> can you get that anywhere else? I don't think you can. And they put up a flag that says help. <laughs> well, I don't think you got any help, mate. I'm too little too late from me, I'm sorry. It's just a normal small island otherwise. Can I dig? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> just dug it out of this plastic box. It's another tiki piece. Nice. So yeah, that was an eventful island. Very juicy. I googled it while writing this script and that island has a 2% chance to appear. I placed my second tiki piece atop the first, my radio perched over here, and then continued trying to catch a catfish. And let me tell you, this was a saga. I'm not catching any catfish. It's very frustrating. Give me catfish. Give me catfish. Fish. I've caught like this many fish. I haven't caught a single salmon or catfish, so none of the big fish. Give me catfish. I wanna get catfished. All right, now I've got the fishing hat on. You have to give me catfish, because I'm wearing my fishing hat. There's one catfish. <laughs> one catfish. There we go, I got two, that'll do me. I cooked up the run speed buff food and when they were ready, I headed out. It did indeed make me run faster, which was wonderful news. I somehow found Mama Bear pretty quick this time. And let me tell you, I really shouldn't have bothered with all my in-game preparation because none of it could beat what I learned on the raft wiki. You can actually cheese this entire fight. <laughs> These are titanium arrows. She's taken like, I don't know how many, a lot. There's no way I would have been able to kill. Oh, I did it. There's no way I would have been able to kill her without cheese. <laughs> she took like 40 arrows. <laughs> That's, that's one way to get it done. It's just as well I made those catfish meals. The run speed really did come in clutch. I ran around looking for treasure for a bit and managed to find my third tiki piece. And when I returned to the raft, I found a spot to put up my mama bear trophy. Oh, it's big. Mama. Big mama. I then decided I better increase my animal farm space in order to accommodate the swelling population of llamas. When placing the grass down, I realized there was no reason I couldn't have grass underneath the sprinklers, so I added some, and the double-decker animal area turned out better than I'd hoped. I made sure to add lighting and then did the big animal swap a -rooney yet again. This will be double-decker llama town. Maybe we can try and get a bunch more before the 200 days is up. We got goats and chicken dodo idiots. At this island, I decided to purchase the remaining hats I hadn't acquired yet. The chef hat, sailor's hat, and silly goofy mustache glasses thingo, which isn't really a hat, but whatever. And I caught a llama. You shall be the first llama to live up the top. Uh, uh, if I can climb the ladder. Therefore, you shall be top bunk bandit. Oh, that doesn't fit. Um, up high guy. <laughs> I had an epic battle with two warthogs and I caught a goat. You can be goat. I also found this fancy painting while on the island. See why you don't want to poo? You got a Kraken lurking up behind you. On day 187, I hit up another big island where I caught a dodo idiot and caught it butthead. I found another tiki piece and caught yet another llama and caught it twitch. Not after the streaming platform, but after the regular movements of this fella's ears. And on day 188, I decided to raise my bridge. At present, it was quite low and therefore its visibility wasn't great, especially now that my raft was no longer vertically challenged. And so I figured go big or go home. <laughs> it's so tall, man. Uh... I think we do it. 
I think we roll with it. Of course, this freed up heaps of space on this lower area, and it meant I could get rid of this random thingo since there was no longer an aerial on it. It also inspired me to tweak the piano area a bit, adding in this wall so it was more distinctly partitioned. I replaced all the captain's essentials up at this lofty height, and as you can see, this new perch had a wonderful view. I set up one aerial on either side with discrete platforms, and expanded the main platform back a bit to make room for the third aerial and a sail. It's kind of like a spaceship. I connected a zip line up there and destroyed the ladder, so the only way to access the bridge was via an electric zipline tool. It really did look like a wacky spaceship on stilts, and at this stage I couldn't work out if that was a good thing or a bad thing. One thing I knew for sure though was that all three ziplines descending to the same spot, randomly above the storage chests, was not a great setup. And so, using this little bit of space at the front of the raft, I built a zipline hub of sorts. I connected my three zipline locations to their own separate pole, and this was a much more intuitive and easy to use setup for getting around the raft. I also capitalized on the new structure by adding a little chill out spot in front of it. It is a bit more of an ordeal to get to my controls, I guess. So much easier to steer and know where I'm going. You get a real feel, f like sense of the ship's movement. I tended to some neglected chores and then made the most of this trading post island. And when I returned, I performed some elite acrobatics. Yeah, <laughs> what a maneuver. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> zip zip zoo. And I set sail for Utopia because I figured it deserved one last visit and I also wanted to buy more danglies from the vending machines. I added three plants to this little wall and decided to use this space to place down three staggered trees. Yeah, no, it's it's tasteful. I think it works. It means it's not too busy up here. It's, it's, it's simple. I also thought it would be cool to have a couch and fridge here. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, the fridge's big ugliness was too powerful to ignore, so I removed it. I don't know what else to do with this area. Do I need to do anything else? It's just like a, it's a, kind of like a power move just to have a couch there for surveying your kingdom. I decided I didn't like how uniform the palm trees were next to the art gallery, so I chopped some of them down and replaced them with other trees. And I'd arrived at Utopia, so I headed out in search of vending machine tokens and managed to find about 18 before stealing more fruit and fish from their market. I used the tokens to buy a bunch more decorative items too. I returned to the raft and got back to drifting. I placed a bunch of plants, one on either side of the couch and some surrounding the newly planted trees, and I began work on this structure part way up the stilts. I started with a crossbeam featuring symmetrical danglies, then added this palm leaf roofing and finally a platform. I placed some lighting and a whole bunch of plants on the platform and I think it looks quite nice. Yeah, I think that really improves because it's less like two giant long sticks now. I also added some hanging decorations to the double decker farm area. I continued sprinkling decorations all over the place, plants, danglies and lighting. And I decided the plants either side of the couch were too symmetrical so I replaced one. I even added a plant to the cottage. Lit up at night, it looks pretty good to me. I visited another big island and this one yielded yet another tiki piece. Check out that tiki tower. And on day 198, I finally fixed up what was most definitely the least impressive section of the raft. This dining area was just a little underwhelming. So I added this little wall with a fireplace set up, some hanging decorations and a little cupboard. And I think it brought the additional structure to the area that was previously lacking. I also played around with a rug under the table and different color options with paint. But in the end, I gave up on the rug and restored the chairs to their default color. I still felt like the area wasn't quite right, but it was certainly much improved. So I left it at that. I feel like there's one more thing I can do. This roof was simply too bare and that would not do, so I added some foliage, a palm tree centerpiece and a bunch of plants, because why not? And on the evening on day 200, I did the rounds, just to bask in the completion of this raft and this series. There's almost too much to list, from the animal farms to the crop farms to the production areas, the kitchen and its danglies to the sitting and chill out areas, the hammock and the bathroom, the cottage and the dining area, the seagull tower and copious plants, complete with an art gallery, and of course, plenty to see all the way up here on the bridge. Time to do some jumpy jumpies. 200 days of raft. Let's go, baby! And just like that, 200 days of raft were completed. Go watch me defile the dead and create a zombie slave army in the hilarious movie, 300 Days of Graveyard Keeper.